we were in the weight room the other day. We talked a lot about lifting technique and very little about the principles of exercise. So I wanted to take some time outside of class to do that right now to kind of catch you back up. First principle we want to talk about is the principle of overload. It's, it's a big one in lifting because if you want to get stronger and leaner, uh, you have to follow this principle. So, for example, if I just lifted the same weight for a year in a row, I'd be really good at lifting that weight, but I would never really increase muscle strength. What I really need to do is do some principle of progression, whereas the only way to produce fitness and health benefits is to require your body to do more than it normally does. And if you take a look at this picture, this person riding this motorcycle did not start carrying this big, huge pile of things. He probably started very small and got bigger and bigger, and he's probably very proficient at it now, but he started small and built up a little bit as it goes. Same thing in the weight room. If you want to get fitness gains, you have to every three to four weeks increase the amount of weight you do, or you increase the number of reps you do, or you increase the the how many sets you do, all kinds of things we can do to increase um, overload. We'll talk more in class on that. But principle of overload, very important. Okay. The other principle is the principle of progression. We do this with every we exercise, whether it's lifting or running. This is really the safety feature. The amount of the amount and intensity of exercise should be increased gradually. It's our safety feature. So if I was going to run a marathon, I wouldn't start by running 26 miles. I would start by running one or two miles, and I would build myself up to eventually, six months later or 18 weeks later, I could run a full marathon. Same thing in the weight room. We're going to start slow. We're going to do three sets of 12, and eventually we'll build ourselves up to maybe we're doing three sets of six when we're really working for power. The other principle is a principle of specificity. We talked about it in class that if you want to get a strong chest, squatting won't build your, build your strong chest. And that's really the, that's the microcosm of specificity. The macro part of specificity really is that you want to be specific to your cardiovascular system or your energy system. And so we talk about aerobic system and anaerobic system. And first we're going to talk about the anaerobic system, which means without oxygen here. And you can see on the right that this is a heart rate graph of someone exercising anaerobically. And this is, could be a weight room, could be a football, but you can see on the graph here that this chart is the warm-up. And then once they start lifting, their heart rate goes up. And then when they rest, their heart rate goes down. When they lift, it goes up and it goes down. Or they're doing a sprint and it comes down. So anaerobic exercise is any aerobic is any exercise that you do for a really hard short amount of time, usually between 0 seconds to 20 minutes, no more than 20 minutes. And then you rest for a period of time and you do it again, you do intervals. So sprinting on the track, lifting weights, all anaerobic. Uh, and then also we have aerobic exercise, which would be more of our long distance or sustained heart rate. So you see the heart rate here. After the warm-up, the heart rate gets to about 150 beats per minute, and it pretty much stays at the same level, right around 160 beats per minute. Maybe at the end they pushed it, and then here's the recovery. So this is specific for if you are a cross-country runner or if you played a sport like basketball, you might have to put some of this in. But we have to start being specific in our training so if I am a football player and I want to train for the football season I would not go out and run five miles I would do more anaerobic work like this because in a football game I would work out anaerobically okay the last one we want to talk about is the fit formula which you've probably had since you're in middle school but we'll, we'll remind you frequency how often should you exercise what we say it should be done at least three to five times aerobically. And your body can recover pretty quickly from aerobic activity. And one to two times a week anaerobically. So when you lift, you should do it uh, once or twice a week. Now you might say, hey, my friend lifts every day. Well, they do, but they often go like chest and back. And then the next day they'll go legs. So when we be specific like that, when you do muscle specific, you can do more than one lift in a, in a week. You just have to make sure it gets 38 hours of recovery, which we'll talk about in, 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 in intensity um, or in, in duration. Or something else. So we go VO2 max here. We got intensity. How hard you should exercise? We have this zone, and we also use the, use the perceived exertion zone, but we'll use heart rate monitors in class to find out what zone we're in, what moderate, weight control, aerobic. You see the anaerobic here in the VO2 max. That's red line. That's really hard. That's like when you're doing the mile, and it really, really hurts. All right. And we use heart rate monitors to kind of tell intensity, but we'll talk more about intensity in class with heart rate monitors time how long should you exercise you know that's probably probably important so if we go aerobically it should be a minimum of 20 minutes or more and I you know I exercise for three or four hours at a time sometimes if I'm training for a marathon your body can handle that aerobically where our heart rates between 140 and 165 beats per minute anaerobically is anywhere from one second to 20 minutes I would do a lot of things for 10 seconds and then rest for 20 seconds and Tabata training 15 seconds on 15 seconds off all that kind of stuff
And then the last one here is type. But the type of exercise you do, we want you should be able to pick the exercise you do and get some exercise out of. It could be rollerblading, walking, swimming, running. Those are all forms. Could be aerobic or anaerobic, depending on how you do it. But then we have all kinds of alternative sports too: soccer, track and field, lifting, um, even uh, going out and playing frisbee golf is exercise. So think about type that you can have a lot of different choices when it comes to the principles of exercise. Okay, thanks.